Well, let, 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 let's talk about your relationship with the reptilians. When you say reptilians, I have to say reptilian because the only reptilian being is Mr. Um, the messages and the information that I get are either from, from Mr. or from the collective mind. Right. The collective mind, I believe it's a collection of not only the reptilian beings, but other species. Um, and they're the greys, um, the between a gray and a and a human, mm -hmm. more gray than human. She was she was alien looking. And then the angelic beings that I have encountered. Um, that was in 2015, and that was a Mister had um, I had tapped into Mister, and um, we had gone on board ship, and I understood that it was a lower level of the ship. And um, when we got there, we were greeted by this angelic being who had this smile that was almost animated. It was. Um, Humongous. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like he was waiting for us. But Mr. was not in reptilian form, and I do not see him in reptilian form. He is an energy. He is a presence. He is a knowing. Um, it was, uh, at that point, he was the size and shape of who he is. Um, an energy. Um, I can't explain it any better. Maybe yeah, yeah. a cloud of form of... But um, what I saw on board, the only time I've ever seen anything like it was when a friend of mine had taken off the back of his television set. And you see all those components and I got really excited. I said, that's it. That's exactly what I saw on the ship. That entire ship yep. was that. And it was divided into several different sections and at each section was a different angelic being. And they all looked exactly alike. Well, when, when you say angelic being, are you talking like angel appearance? Mm -hmm. With the big white fluffy wings and all, and wow. the white gowns to the floor. And I said to Mr., and I didn't want them to hear me, and I remember covering my mouth, which was really silly because everything was telepathic, and I said, they all have wings. What are they, angels? And Mr. and I have a connection where... I not only feel his emotions, but I hear his words. And I could feel his humor at my being so naive. And he said, ask them. So I turned to the smiling angelic being and he said telepathically, we are here to help save the planet. We are benevolent beings here to help save the planet. If this makes us angels, then we are. So I, I believe that I had perceived them to be angelic beings because of the love mm -hmm. that I felt in that room, the, in the, the buzzing, the electrical buzzing of energy, all love. Um, but I, I perceived each angel to be a different species and they were all working together, which I, oh, what a lovely feeling it was. There was no, one-upmanship, no jealousy. Right. It was beautiful. Okay. Well, you decided to write um, your second book, Preordained. Pre mm. um, why did you decide to write the book? Well, I had to <laughs> because too much was going on. Preordained is far from a UFO book. Um, I expose the internal transformation that takes place in what is called um, hardcore experiencers as we um, learn that everything is consciousness, everything, uh, missing time, uh, telepathy, uh, past lives, it's all consciousness. Um, I, I think I read somewhere where you said you don't feel like you belong on this planet, and I've had that said to me by many experiences in the past. So um, 
maybe explain what you meant by that and then talk about the book. Okay. I, I feel very uncomfortable on this planet. I, I feel like I don't belong. Um, I know I don't belong. And I, I have trouble um, being around humans for any length of time because they drain me. They drain me. I, I hate to use the word dislike of humanity. Um, as a whole, as a whole, I, I have an intense uh, dislike of humanity. I can't believe I just said that. But I have several friends that I love and people that are in my life that I love. But as a whole, humanity is pretty rotten. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we're living in. That's me being honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're living in pretty crazy times at the moment, and it just seems to be going from bad to worse. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I. This is where I. I think I find all the positive in the COVID. I am, you know, like Mister told me to find the positive in every negative. This is a time now where. Animals are coming out that have never been out. They're, they're taking their space that we've taken away from them. Oh. And people are now, uh, they're learning what it feels like to be in a cage. You know, these people that go to work all day long and they keep their animals in a cage and they say the animal loves it. Pollution is improving. And, um, we always talk about we're the leaders of everything, you know, America, America does. Oh, we're the greatest at this and the biggest and the best. Yep, we are. We're number one with COVID. Absolutely. What, number one with Corona. Um, pollution is improving. You know, Mother Nature has, um, it's like a self-cleaning oven. And humanity is learning to appreciate the smallest things like toilet paper. So we have to, there is, there is positive, and I understand it. it it's, 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 it's hard for, for everyone, but I think this is Mother Nature's way of saying, wake up, pay attention, respect me, show me some respect. Yeah. The book uh, Preordain, um, is, this, is this something, say, the ordinary layman can, can get their, their mind around? Mm. Uh, it's going to challenge even the most uh, open-minded uh, person of people. I understood that when I was writing it. Um, and like one of the messages I received, our messages are not for everyone. Many will be left behind. Uh, but I encourage everyone to, to have an open mind and, and read. There are other hardcore experiencers going through some of this high strangeness. I mean, some of the things I'm going through, I haven't heard anyone say. Um, yeah, I, I've been on quite a ride. Um, but I think that, that the longer that you are an experiencer and the more open-minded you are, and I live alone, I'm a hermit, so I'm the perfect victim if you want to call it that because it's just me and my cat even when when i did wasn't in lockdown i spent most of my life in my apartment um i venture out and go partying with my cousin you know once a month you know that's my big yahoo but um i'm a i'm a homebody well Talk about the mental boggle point. Is that is that the premise of preordained? Yes, it is the point when even the most open-minded um, are unable to accept any more information. They just can't accept any more information. So the brain snaps back like a rubber band effect um, to a, to what is more comfortable. Uh, so And um, 
That's exactly what it is. That that term was coined by the late Jim Mars, the mental boggle point. Mm -hmm. And my book will take you to that mental boggle point over and over again. But I'm telling you that that everything in that book is is true. Um, you know, there's no money, there's no fame, there's, you know, people think you write a book, you make money. I'm lucky if it puts gas in my car. You want to know the truth? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't do radio interviews. <laughs> it's very difficult for me. It's really hard. I do everything to avoid them, which is, is really... Um, <sighs> well, that's why we appreciate you uh, giving your time with us today. Um, so yes. the, the mental boggle point, so it, it probably explains why people find, find it hard to believe experiences at this point in time. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's going to, it's going to do a, a complete loop, but, uh, I think we're just going through a transition phase at the moment with our belief system. Well, I've lost a lot of family, a lot of friends. I, I was sick of going to family events where I would bring up, I was going to do a radio interview and I could see them kicking each other under the damn table. Um, you know, I don't miss them. Uh, I really don't. Um, it was very painful at first because I wanted everyone to believe me. I wanted to be validated. I don't need that anymore. I'm 70 years old. Um, I'm, I have nothing to gain by by telling you what I'm telling you and telling the world and sharing. My mission is to, to help others lose the fear, to come forward with their stories. And that is my mission. And that's what I'm trying to do.